You know, the more you read the expanded universe, the more you will get fascinated. And I think canon has a long ways to go. I love what canon is doing with some things, not so much with others, but you can clearly see the inspiration coming from the expanded universe. A lot of Legends material has been laid by the wayside. However, I agree with a lot of fans when we talk about head canon because there's something to that. There's something to reading Legends material and actually being fascinated, especially with one Jedi, which the topic is about this particular Jedi, and what a pioneer and marvelous one she was. I don't think a lot of people appreciated her back in the day because she appeared in the movies as well as in the animated series, and that is Jedi Master Adi Galea. In fact, Adi Galea was a member of the Jedi High Council during the Clone Wars, and she, in fact, did wield a red lightsaber as a Jedi. This is what's kind of fascinating when it comes to other Jedi, the stigmatization of the red lightsaber. Would she be appreciated? Would she be accepted? Would she be even criticized? You can see the maverick Jedi already. You can see that out of the fold come these pioneer maverick Jedi that a lot of people love. And I do love Adi Kalia for this because me myself, I've always like wanted to be different from the fold. At times we fail, we pick ourselves back up, but we never let anybody else tell us how to think or what to do. This is how I see Mace Windu and Adi Galea. Mace Windu having a purple lightsaber, a very unique one within the Jedi Order, but Adi Galea took it a step further than Mace Windu by wielding practically a red lightsaber. In reality, it's a crimson lightsaber, and what's kind of weird also is that the artists made it look red orange and of course this is when we get into the canon thing with the new Ahsoka trailer where we saw what we supposed to be dark Jedi and Balon wielding these orange red lightsabers. So at times we see Adigalia wielding an orange red but it's definitely a crimson type of lightsaber. It all depends on the artists of course and there is some reasons and some speculations also as to why she did this. Again, it goes beyond Mace Windu and the colors of their lightsabers because Arigalia not only wielded a kind of a red blade, but she also, her grip signified her stance deviated a lot from the Jedi norm. I wanted to tackle the entire Arigalia phenomenon from Legends material and also move on later in the video to Canon 2 by talking about what these red lightsabers and former Jedi, even Jedi wielding them, Later on, we're going to talk about canon as well, but right now, I want to talk a lot about Adi Galea because she is pretty impressive. Whenever we have a chance to talk about something unique and weird in Star Wars, we're gonna do it. And today, it's all about one particular Jedi that, for reasons unknown, decided to use a red crystal. Let's clarify one thing though guys, this is Legends material. So back then crystals were something that you forged for mostly on the planet Elum and sometimes on various other areas. With time you developed a connection with the crystal spiritually, however that didn't hinder on its color. Your alliance, whether it was light or dark, it didn't change the lightsaber color whatsoever. You couldn't bleed a crystal, right? If any of you guys have played KOTOR, you know exactly what I'm talking about, Knights of the Old Republic. In that game, you go around collecting everything and anything. Basically, if you guys wanted to insert a yellow crystal, your blade will be yellow. And same with other colors too. So in Legends, the Jedi that used a crimson red blade was Adi Galea. This can clearly be seen here with Master Galea standing together with Siri Tashi, her student. She is definitely wielding a red blade. Now, let's talk a little bit about Galea. As a revered Jedi Master in the Jedi High Council, Galea was naturally an exceptionally skilled member of the Order, and most importantly, she completed several notable assignments during her service to the Galaxy and the Jedi Order. But during this time is where the red blade comes in. 
Galia was a key player in the Stark hyperspace war and served as chief negotiator during talks aimed at mending some ties between warring factions on Malastare. Now, it is during these times that a lot of comics featured Adi Galia and what we can clearly see is her wielding a red lightsaber. One of these comics, if you guys want to read it, is Star Wars Republic Emissaries of Malastare. So, like all Jedi, Master Galia was taught the ways of lightsaber combat and the uses of the Force from a child to adulthood. But during her studies, something weird happened. Master Galia chose to adopt a reverse one-handed grip when wielding the blade. So even the handle was not Jedi proper, giving her the ability to counter attacks with long, wide swings and strikes. And most importantly, for reasons unknown, she originally chose an unusual color for her lightsaber crystal to power her blade and that was as we said before crimson red that red stone for a lot of Jedi had strong associations with the ancient dark lords of the Sith and the red blades that they wielded so you can say that some Jedi were definitely weirded out by her choice however what you have to remember is the Sith had been extinct for millennia at that time or at least that's what they believed immediately following the discovery of the Sith with Darth Maul and the rising tensions in the Galactic Senate, Master Galia replaced her red crystal in her saber's hilt with a traditional blue crystal, a crystal that was associated with the Jedi Guardians and that's why we see her wield a blue lightsaber in the Clone Wars series. What do you guys think about Master Galia and her red blade? Do you think she was just trying to bring the red blade back in style or was it just to be different like Mace Windu with a purple lightsaber? Same can be said, of course, for Balon and Shin Hati, who both have orange-red lightsabers. This actually proves that these two guys were not Darksiders from the beginning, they were actually Jedi Sentinels. And what lightsaber color did most Jedi Sentinels use? That's right, it was orange-yellow lightsaber. Not exclusively, of course, but most Jedi Sentinels, including Jedi temple guards used orange lightsabers. If we go by how Darth Vader's lightsaber color of crimson came out, we can kind of deduce how Balon's orange red lightsaber came out as well. As much as they try to accept the dark side for unknown reasons, we're gonna find out of course more, maybe they got lost in the unknown regions and subsequently went mad by the dark side, joined Thrawn ultimately. Again, whatever the reason is, the orange red lightsaber came as a result of this. These two were former Jedi Sentinels turned Darksiders. They made their original yellow crystals bleed and it came out orange red. This is why this unusual color never seen before in canon was presented in the Ahsoka trailer wielded by Balon and Prentice. It's really quite fascinating if you think about it, but even though this hints at their origins of formerly being Jedi Guardians or Jedi Sentinels, there is still much to learn about these two and I, and I can't wait to do that in future videos. Ahsoka is seen battling an Inquisitor looking dude as well in the trailer, but I don't think he is connected with Balon and Shin. I think that what Disney originally tried to do together with the Lucasfilm back in the day when they introduced the whole crystal bleeding and crystal healing thing now with Ahsoka 2. It's really original. It's an original idea that might have been really interesting to explore as the years went on. My problem with it is that they have never really explored it in live action or animated form, whatever the case. The only instance of crystal bleeding that was seen was, as I said earlier, in the Darth Vader issue number 5 that came out in 2017, guys, and that was was one of the only times that that was explored a couple of times in the novels but as we've seen the comics and novels are not really reliable when it comes to canon we have still yet to see somebody do that in live action for it actually to be kind of confirmed to be canon you cannot outrun from it anymore and i would love to see that implemented in some sort of a live action series or a movie that would be spectacular Alrighty, guys let me know what do you think down below in the comments thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed leave a thumbs up down below subscribe for dailies now you have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video, and may the Force be with you. Until then.